East Coast doing civil rights cases. So you all are next. I'm so excited to be here. Um, Smitha. All right, with that, Jazakallah Khair, judges, really excited to have all of you here. With that, let's get started. Our first capstone presentation is going to be a video by none other than our student, Ashraf Kuzbari. So let's play the video, and our judges will judge. Ready? MashaAllah. Akhla Salam, come on up. Assalamu alaikum. So my topic is on parent and children relationships. Now I feel like if they were better, then society would be a lot better as well. In a world full of hate, a home should be a sanctuary. As El Nono Zarfe is forlorn the attempt to escape what's outside, but now that even in your safe haven, discord is present, whether it is in the loudness of the silence or the tumultuous chaos, there is distance and unease, if not in the hearts and minds, if not in physicality, then in the hearts and minds of someone such as me and you. To elaborate on this poem, what I mean is, parents and children are very distant. Whenever children come home, they usually just isolate themselves into their rooms. Parents don't know what they're doing, who they're hanging out with online, or whatever they're doing. Again, this is not the children's fault. They are provided with, the, with this since they are younger. You know, I've had kids. You, you gave them this. This is not their fault. But now what I mean by this is not to put restrictions on them, but instead to give them healthier outlets. Just as there are drug addicts, you don't put them in whenever they're in re rehabilitation. The drug is just not taken away from them. It's, you're, they're given alternate substances so that they can overcome the t addiction. It's the same thing with social media, which is one of the things that kids do whenever they know they're alone in their rooms. So, whenever, yeah, so you don't know what they're doing on there and who they're hanging out with. So, So since you don't know who they're hanging out with, you should open up to them. Kids should also open up to their parents because the youth needs to understand that friends are not forever. It is family that is there forever. And a lot of us, we don't communicate with each other. Like parents don't know children, the children don't know their parents. And we're just looking forward, the children are looking forward to just leaving home or if I, or just like you know turning 18 and leaving or getting a job and then leaving and li living on their own. Um, a lo the other thing is, parents should, since they are younger, since the child, ever since the child is younger, they should provide them with a safe and void platform and like a home so that they don't find other places to find that validation and fill in that void, because that is how the wrong validation is co that uh, the wrong validation comes. That's where wrong validation comes from, such as social media likes, views, followers, even like the opposite gender, and what attention you get from them. This, a lot of this can be avoided if parents and their children get more, uh, get more along. This is not just the parents' fault. The teens should also, you know, tell their parents what's going on, involve them in their own lives and everyone else's lives as well. This doesn't just affect the children. This affects the overall society because however your kid is at home, that's how they will react outside as well. Um, It is reported that Al Aqra ibn Habas saw Allah's messenger kissing his children, his grandchildren, and said to the Prophet, I have tell ten children, but I have never kissed any of them. The Prophet said, He who does not show mercy towards his children, no mercy shall be shown to him. This is by, cited by Al Bukhari, so it's reliable. And it's not just the parents' responsibility, it's also the children's responsibility. So it says in the Holy Quran, chapter 17, Surah Isra, Verses 23 to 24, your Lord has enjoined the following. You should not worship anyone but him alone. Treat your parents with great kindness. If either or both of them attain old age, do not even say oof to them, nor rebuke them. But speak to them in kind words. Treat them in, with humility and tenderness and pray. 
O our Lord, be merciful to them just as they brought me up with kindness and affection in my childhood. The main goal of all of this is so that children within themselves have taqwa and like God awareness of what they're doing. And also to have an Islamic conscience so that you don't have to tell them what is right and what is wrong. Instead, internally they know what they're doing, what, whatever they're doing, what, is, what they're doing is right and whether it's wrong. It's to have the characteristics of fitra as well. So I hope that this, uh, thank you for listening and I hope this at least benefits one person or at least one family. Asalaamu Alaikum. Thank you very much for that. We're gonna try again and see if we can get, oh, maybe not. <laughs> Let's continue. Our next speaker is gonna be Alicia Sahar. Alicia? Okay. Well. Brother Rashir. Yeah. Five was five. Yeah, I was looking for six minutes. Oh, let's just grab this. And then give me a second, let me try to get your PowerPoint to show. Assalamu alaikum everyone, I am Alicia Sahara and the issue that I will be discussing today is the violence against women. Violence is the use of physical force so as to injure, abuse, damage, or destroy. These are some statistics to show the extremely large number of women that are affected by this issue. Violence against women has been increasing over time, violating women's human rights. Violence against women has negatively caused major mental and physical health problems. This issue has impacted many women around the world. One out of three women worldwide have experienced either physical or verbal abuse by the hands of their intimate partner. This type of discrimination should be taken with much more severity since some, some, some of the countries with the highest rate of domestic violence as of 2022 are Islamic countries including Afghanistan, Pakistan, and Yemen. In this article by M. Bashir Ahmed, he had stated that Allah SWT repeatedly says in the Quran to show love and kindness and words that they should not harm their wives even after divorce. Allah SWT has even forbidden us to call each other bad names and to humiliate them. The abusive behavior does not reflect the kindness and love for their spouses. Still, some men justify their behavior knowing that they are disobeying Allah SWT's guidance. This trend is highlighted in recent events. This is seen in the Sanya Khan murder case. Sanya Khan was a Pakistani woman who had documented her journey of divorce on TikTok while receiving backlash from her community. She spoke about self-worth and healing after leaving an abusive marriage. She stated in a TikTok video that going through a divorce as a South Asian woman feels like you have failed at life sometimes. The way the community labels you, the lack of emotional support you receive, and the pressure to stay with someone because what will people say is isolating. It makes it harder for women to leave marriages that they shouldn't have been in to begin with. On July 18, 2022, Sanya Khan was murdered by her ex-husband at the age of 29 years old. Abusive behavior and domestic violence are prohibited in Islam. Another expert has stated that under no circumstances is violence against women encouraged or allowed in Islam. These are many, there are many examples in the Quran and a Hadith that describe the behavior of Muslims towards husband and wife. 
The relationship should be one of mutual love, respect, and kindness. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, O oh believers, treat women with kindness even if you dislike them. It is quite possible that you dislike something which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala might yet make a source of abundant good. These are some ways that we can work together and work towards solving this issue. Starting with the masjid. The masjid need to do better by teaching men to love and respect their spouses and to empower women to stand up for themselves. A great, way to, a great way to start would be by enacting educational programs centered around women's rights and enacting a regular self-defense class to teach women how to protect themselves in case of violence or danger around them. Creating a comfortable environment for women to openly voice about issues in their lives is very important. We could do this by appointing a preferably female board member as a point of contact for women in need of help. The board should also have town hall meetings regularly for women to come in and share their concerns. Our community could do better by raising our future generation to respect women and their rights in Islam. Gender equality is considered taboo in our communities, which makes it hard for women to take a stand for themselves. We must openly address the importance of respecting women and their choices. We can do this by encouraging parents to support their children throughout every stage of their life, including a potential divorce, and by enacting parent education and training programs. Mental health is a big issue that isn't recognized as much as it should. Mental, he mental health issues are also considered taboo in our communities, which is why they aren't treated seriously by families. Mental health must be treated as a physical disease. Many perpetrators of domestic violence struggle with mental illnesses. Encouraging members of the community to take care of, to take care of their mental health can, can stop this, can help stop this. We can do this by enacting educational programs to spread about mental health, inviting mental health professionals to come to educate the community, and hiring mental health professionals at the masjid. Currently, domestic violence is not properly addressed and punished legally. Pushing lawmakers to provide suitable punishment and immediate action for domestic violence cases would give better protection for women around the world. We could do this by participating in protests, marches, and conducting social media campaigns. Only an honorable man treats women with honor and integrity, and only a vile and dishonorable man humiliates and degrades women by the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Thank you so much for your attention. All right, Jazakallah Khair. One of our judges is gonna give feedback. As he's giving some feedback, I'll get the video ready for the next speaker. So Alicia, that was a fantastic presentation. I just want to give you a couple uh, pointers for the future. So you, you on, on presentation design, so you had all of your materials memorized. The entire time you knew your stuff, you were looking at me, you didn't need this. But I doubt very highly anyone in, there are maybe three or four slides that had a lot of text. That I, I highly doubt many people could read that. I couldn't read that myself. So I'm trying to read that, but I know you're, you can speak it to me. Replace some of those things, like Sonia Khan with, with all the writing, just put her picture. You talk about the masjid doing domestic uh, uh, self-defense classes, just put a picture, right? Just put a picture to those and keep speaking and, and, and the focus stays on you. It was a great job. A place where calamity unveils at every corner. A place where a girl wears a hijab and people hate on her. The world, a place where poverty consumes billions. A place where countries kill innocent civilians. The world, a place where many children receive no education. A place where racism is found in every nation. The world, a place where the planet is infested with pollution. A place where the truth is blurry like low resolution. If only there was a solution. What's been stated are many contrasting issues, but with one similarity. 
These are all worldwide problems that are faced today. However, there's some good news. There are currently organizations out there that are working hard to solving these problems. With that being said though, why is it change occurring? Well, simply put, the organizations working to put away these world problems are lacking funding. If only there was a way to get them the funding that they needed, then maybe we could see some change in the world. Assalamu alaikum. My name is Ashraf Kuzbedi and I am a 14 year old teenager with aspirations of reforming the world for the better. Now I live by a quote, be the change you wish to see in this world. A simple saying, which is extremely true. To change the world, you need to be a part of the solution. Not only that, but Islamically, we are also urged to enjoin good and forbid evil in the world. That's why I have set out to change the world myself. Taking down one world problem is wonderful. On the other hand, having a solution and action plan to fix all of the world problems single-handedly is marvelous. As a teenager, it may seem impossible to do so. However, I thought for months upon months to find a solution. All things considered, I have created that solution by developing ReformCoin. ReformCoin is a revolutionary cryptocurrency project focused on revolutionizing crypto donations for all for the future. Now, donations are the main source of funding for most charities, education programs, and initiatives that are working to better the world. These organizations need the funding in order to operate at their maximum capacity and make a change. Now, I want you to just think of the process that you typically take if you were to make a donation to an organization. You'd usually go to a donation platform like GoFundMe and donate however much you'd like through the platform. Unfortunately, these same platforms that have become the default that people use to donate have a major flaw, which are the fees that they charge. These ridiculous fees not only cut the amount received by organizations from these donations, but they also discourage donors from donating to the cause as their money isn't fully going towards what they intended it to go to. With Reform Coin, we are looking to reform donations, which in turn helps these organizations that are set out to better the world. Rather than the organizations not receiving the full amount of money being sent by the donors, organizations are rewarded by receiving donations through Reform. Thanks to the slight transaction tax, all holders, including any organization that owns Reform Coin, automatically receive a dollar portion of every transaction made with Reform Coin. This means that by donating through Reform, you are sending the organization a growing crypto donation. Reform Coin is already live as we speak. For more information, check out this world changing initiative at the official website reformcoin.org.
was my, it was my responsibility to keep going with this campaign. Because at the end of the day, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will ask me what I did for this community, not what others could have done. In the Quran, more specifically Surah Muhammad, it says, and we shall try you until we test those among you who strive their utmost and persevere in patience. Yes, community assistance is invaluable and often desired, but it is not the only way to reach your goal. Next, I reached out to the CARE chapter in Washington State, and they were very responsive, and provided me with really great chips. After the first time I reached out, uh, I had some meetings with the school district, and then two months later, I reached out to them again and did not get any email back, and it's been a couple months. The final problem I faced was actually from the district itself. At first, they too were very responsive. I arranged a meeting with the school's equity director and received very assuring news from him. This was a very simple process. He had done it before in Chicago, and me speaking to the board was just gonna be a uh, formality. After I presented to the board and rallied a few other Muslim students to come as well, I emailed him to follow up on the next steps. However, it has been over four weeks and I have not received any acknowledgement from them or him whatsoever. A few students and parents in the district have also emailed and have not gotten any reply. This is where care and the local massage support will be very meaningful and effective. This process, far from being done, has taught me a lot. First and foremost, it is key to have patience. Let me tell you honestly that it is extremely hard to be patient when you are being completely ignored on a matter that is so important to yourself and other Muslims in that area. Second, we as Muslims, we need to be united regardless of our differences because how are we ever going to make headway in a country if we're not a united front? Despite all the problems you may run into, I want to encourage you to do this in your district and I will be there to support you every step of the way, inshallah. Don't let any roadblock stop you from moving forward. As the Prophet wasallam said, strive for what benefits you and rely on God and do not give up. If something befalls you, do not say, if I had only done such and such. Instead say, it is as God decreed and he does what he pleases. When we petition and stand up for our rights to be recognized within our school districts, we are creating a more inclusive space for Muslims. There will be an increased awareness about Islam and Muslim students will no longer have the need to choose between their faith and their future. Let us not wait for tomorrow to make our society more inclusive of us. Let us take the initiative from the ground up and change our circumstances with our own two hands. Jazakumullah khair, assalamu alaikum. MashaAllah, that was a great presentation. I know I'm inspired to work with my school district and get them to celebrate Eid in the near future. Our next amazing speaker is gonna be Hadi Siddiqui. Hadi, come on over and make yourself ready and I'll open up your presentation. Oh, did you have a presentation? Yes, I did. I don't know if you sent it to me. Did you to me? Yes. Do you know what email they sent it from? Uh, I sent it to the care of Kiev. No, I'm saying, what email did you send it from? All right, we're gonna find how these presentation then have them come up, I don't have it here. So for now, we're gonna skip that and have Hannah Ali come to the stage and give her presentation. Hannah, please make your way forward.
السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته. So my name is Hana Ali, and inshallah, we'll be discussing the topic of water scarcity. So, as you know, water is a renewable resource as it goes undergoes the process of the water cycle, and yet in many parts of the world, water is scarce. So, what is the exact definition of water scarcity? It is the lack of fresh water sources to meet the standard water demand. So before I go in a bit depth about um, the problems that we're facing because of the water shortages, is let me go over the two different types of water that we have on Earth. So 98% of salt water takes up our Earth, and 2% is fresh water, is what we mainly use for several different things. So what exactly is the problem? Well, first of all, we have overusage and wastage and over irrigation, and that leads to high demand and water scarcity. And according to Texas Water Development, 35% more in water is used in, install in houses with installed irrigation versus houses without installed irrigation. That's wasting a lot of water. And per year, United States itself uses up at least 256 trillion gallons. And China, being the most populated country, uses up at least 358 trillion gallons. And a lot of these first world countries are basically using up a lot of water. And Allah even says in Surah 7, Ayah 31, and this is just part of the Ayah, and eat and drink but do not waste by excess, for Allah likes not al-Musrifun. And what is al-Musrifun? Those who waste by extravagance. Another reason why we are facing this issue is because of lack of infrastructure. No water management, no dams, no uh, municipal pipes, and no groundwater systems. And according to the United Nations, 700 million people in 43 different countries suffer from water scarcity, and to name a few is Somalia, Ethiopia, Lebanon, and Afghanistan. Another reason is because of climate change, and climate change affects weather patterns, and this causes severe weather patterns, causing droughts and floods in some areas. This leads to our fourth problem, natural calamities. This causes us to have less water in certain areas. So before I go on to some potential solutions, I wanted to show a graph of Texas's drought versus uh, four other um, desert, des desert states. So currently, Texas is facing 84% of some level of drought, and yet, and currently, we are also facing 32% of severe drought, 32% of Texas, and Texas is a very big state. And in the beginning of the year, we have been facing 67% of drought, and since then, our freshwater supply has slowly been decreasing. As you may know, uh, there's a city an hour away from here, it's called Dun Gunter, Texas, and there was a water emergency where they were at the brink of losing all of their water resources. And then we can see here the four desert uh, states. And in California, it's 85% of a dr facing drought, and it's still increasing. Uh, with this drought, um, many have gone to do water reclamation, which is the reuse of wastewater. So what are some potential solutions that we can do? Well, we can reduce our water footprint by using eco-friendly appliances like um, toilets that have used much less water than uh, what we normally use. And also faucets can be reduced as well with diff changing the valves. And we can also, shortage actually encourages infrastructure. So many will become in competition for water. So we'll, they will decide to um, make programs to improve their infrastructure overall. And we can also try to reduce the carbon footprint by doing the bare minimum, like reduce, reuse, and recycle. And um, committees may not, uh, so calamities may not stop because, uh, but people can help reduce by, you know, participating in these activities or these potential solutions. But what can we do as EPIC, as a community? Well, I've noticed around, in, that there has been irrigation and high running faucets right after Isha uh, in Epic. And many of the sprinklers run water onto gravel parking lots instead of grass. And there's high running faucets in bathroom sinks and wudu stations that it causes extreme uh, water 
waist. I wanted to show a video here of what one person would be using for wudu. And many adults and children I've seen that have been using this much water, which is clearly not needed. And so what can we do? Well, some, we can start a fund where we can, where Epic, the Epic Go Green Fund, where we can get water tanks to collect rainwater for reuse. So use, so we can reuse it for irrigation and uh, toilet water. And this helps us reduce the usage of fresh water. We can also adjust the valves to decrease the output of wudu stations. So instead of uh, the full force of water coming down, we can have the sprinkler water instead adjusted. And we can maintain sprinklers to only run on grasses rather than more, so no more free car washes. Um, JazakAllah for listening. Uh, JazakAllah khair. Takbir. Allah. Takbir. Inshallah, after the presentation, if we could avoid clapping and we'll do a takbir for everybody, that will be even better, inshallah. Our next speaker is going to be Hajar. Um, Hajar, I'm going to mess up your last name, girl. Barach, Barach uh, But she's got an amazing poem. I'm really uh, thrilled to have everybody hear it. Come on up. And remember, the clapping, let's keep it on the download. Thank you so much. Let me ask you a question. Do you feel nothing? Do you feel nothing when you hear that someone was shot? Or do you look away just because it happens a lot? Do you feel nothing when you hear that a child died? Or do you ignore it and say that your hands are tied? Do you feel nothing when you hear of the shootings that go on in this country? The land of hope, the place for a better life? If it is the land of opportunity, then why do we allow such cruelty? Parents brought their children here for better chances while the government allows extreme gun rights for their own advancements. But if you ask me, why should I care? Look to all the victims with stories to share. From parents crying on the news for a school-wide slaughter to a mother not wanting to buy light-up shoes for her daughter to protect her. To protect her in the dark from the shooter so she wouldn't end up like the kids who never got to ride their scooters. Texas is one of the leading in shooting cases you want to talk about the next new trend while your memory erases any traces of the kids who died. In California, Oklahoma, Georgia, Florida, Texas. Do I need to spell it out for you? T-E-X-A-S, you live here. Can it be any more clear? The threat is closer than it seems. 19 kids dead, only seven hours away. How can your ignorance outweigh the need to protect those that you love before they become just another name next to the flags, flowers, and a dove? Are you not tired of hearing about all this death? You ask me why I care, isn't it obvious? First off, human nature, you think I want to die as a teenager? But it's not just about me, because let's be honest, our biggest fear isn't losing a loved one, isn't I turn animal, it's losing a loved one. Mother, father, daughter, son, through natural causes or by the hand of a gun, when it happens, it is done. And if you don't care about that happening to someone else, then there must be something wrong to not care about someone so young. Look me in the eye and tell me you feel nothing because I would look you right back and say that you're bluffing. You're bluffing because this child has done nothing wrong, innocent yet taken away from a life that is long, one that is filled with experiences and hope, not one where they're gone and their loved ones are forced to cope. If you're okay with that, then by all means, zone out. Don't stand with us while we scream and shout for what is right because innocent children deserve a fight. The Prophet ﷺ is our messenger and role model. We listen to what he taught us about Islam and if you're Muslim, then you follow. You swallow your ego and comply because Allah subhanahu wa ta is our creator. We follow what his messenger says so we don't regret it later. So when the Prophet ﷺ disapproves of the killing of children, how can we ignore these shootings like it's not a horrible sin, do you really think? Do you really think that if the Prophet ﷺ was here today, he would do nothing? Do you think he would sit quietly because protesting is unbecoming? Do you think he wouldn't come running? Do you think he wouldn't try to stop all this gunning? Do you think he would hide or would he protect those children no matter what was coming? You tell me. 
You tell me what he would do and tell me if we should do the same. And don't tell me it's easier for him because he's a prophet. Take that excuse and put it in the closet and follow his lead. Follow the messenger that was sent to show us what to do. Because once this life is over, we don't get a redo. And those kids lost theirs. So cherish your life with every breath that you take. And for the love of God, realize what's at stake, a life. A life that was given by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Do you not want to do everything you can for Allah's creation? Do you not want to show him your dedication? A child is pure, a child is clean. They need protection from newborns to teens. So what can we do? What can I do that will actually make a difference? And I'm not talking about some federal conference. What can I do? Let me ask you, what am I doing right now? I am talking, and talking can take you a long way if you can just hold yourself up and ignore the mocking talking. Let's create a group of people just like me who aren't afraid to challenge society for what is right. We can call to people who agree in masjids, churches, synagogues, temples, people of faith and people who can see the problem. Because how can you be a person of faith and not see what is wrong? If we join together, we can all preach. The bigger the group, the further we can reach. Together, we can work for a better senator because then we can get better gun laws with someone who is not caught in the jaws of money makers. Like some other states, we can require a license instead of handing out guns since it's fine, you're 18, but how does that make sense? How does it make sense that the legal age for alcohol is 21, but at 18 you say, go ahead, take the gun? Both cause death and destruction, but tell me, do you know how a gun functions? Move one finger and a life is gone. It doesn't matter if you have brains or brawn, your life is gone in an instant. But if we get our opinions in office, we can change things first on a state level, then on a federal level, whatever it takes to end this suffering, to help a child whose only thoughts are that they like coloring anything, do anything. Our state, one of the leading in shootings, how many more will it take before you wake up? Instead of just switching the channel while you drink coffee from your cup, will you fight for change now or wait until you hear your child's name, your sibling's name, your niece's name, your nephew's name, your loved one's name? No, this is not a dream. You need to wake up. Help us form our team. You need to wake up. America is not as pretty as it may seem. You need to wake up. Are you just going to wait for the extreme to happen? You need to wake up. Wake up before you hear a scream that's too close for comfort. Wake up before all you have left of them is a sweatshirt. Wake up instead of thinking that this problem is minuscule before the last thing you say to them is have a nice day at school. Wake up because I can't be the only one who cares, and caring is more than just a repost. So let me ask you again. Do you feel nothing? Or are you going to do something? Thank you. Takbir. Uh, Takbir. Uh, uh, mashallah. Our next speaker is going to be Jenna Ali. Jenna, come on over. And I'll remind people again, let's avoid the clapping and we can, inshallah, just say the beer. So, Jenna, let's open your, do you have a presentation? Yeah. All right. Oh, it's not this is, this is it, right? Can you type in your email here? I'm not sure. This is typing for what? This one? Oh, uh, yeah, yeah. Sorry, I thought I had the updated one. And then just press right. Oh no, what? That's weird. That's fine. I'll take it. Thank you. Um, Alright, so it's doing it, but it's just showing them as pictures. So you might have to like go back and forth with it. So do I just. Can I use arrows? No, it's not showing at all. That was arrows. Um, all you can do is just click this and then click on the next photo. So that opens the back. Yeah, unfortunately, I'm doing it every time. Um, Okay. Cool. 
Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. My name is Jannah Ali, and today we'll be focusing on examples of Islamophobia and racism against Muslim students around the world. Let's take a closer look at a few countries in the world where Muslim students face hardships due to discrimination. In the United States, interviews with 700 Muslim students in the, in the state of California found high levels of Islamophobic bullying, harassment, and discrimination by peers and adults, including teachers. A report conducted in 2021 by the Council on American Islamic Relations, CARE, found that nearly half the students, 47.1%, reported being bullied for being Muslim. Hania Sadaf, my own fellow peer in this course, was discriminated against all because of her right, her identity, her hijab. I too have gotten nasty stares, been called vulgar names, and felt out of place, all in the safeness of my own school. France is another country where Muslim students, especially females, face discrimination. All across France, hijabi students are being stripped of their right to wear hijab if they're under the age of 18. This is especially hard for the students that feel that their hijab represents who they are and what beliefs they stand by. Hijab bans have also been enforced in southern India, where unfortunately, some students have chosen to sacrifice their own right to education rather than obey the ban on hijabs. Muslims in India make up one-fourth of India's enormous population of 1.4 billion. These students are using their voices and actions through protests and demonstrations to stand up for what is right and make a difference. And lastly, our Muslim brothers and sisters in China are being tortured and persecuted simply for being Muslim. Nearly half a million children of Uyghurs and Kazakhs have been separated from their families and placed into boarding schools where they are brainwashed so that their religious identity is erased. They're forced into these schools at very, very young ages with little to no idea of the horrors that their parents are enduring. The children forced into these schools are, compared, are seen as lucky in the media compared to children that are forced into the camps as well. As a Muslim hijabi student that has been attacked based on my religious background, I feel that I connect to these students. Maybe not on the same level, but we do share one common thing. We are all perceived as weak and unimportant. And this is the reality for many Muslims, but it does not have to be this way. Imagine, every day, you step into school and you are greeted with bullying and harassment. This is the sad and unfortunate reality for many Muslim students today. Round-the-clock racism and bigotry can lead to depression, anxiety, loss of self-esteem, self-harm, or even suicide. Constant belittlement regarding religious background can lead to the student feeling ashamed or embarrassed about their own religion. Our, Abu Sayyid al-Khudri reported that our beloved Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam said, whoever among you sees evil, let him change it with his hand. And if he is unable to do so, then with his tongue. And if he is unable to do so, then with his heart. And that is the weakest level of faith. Although it is challenging to change foreign countries' policies, there are some steps we can take to help our Muslim brothers and sisters around the world facing discrimination. Attending marches to raise awareness or boycotting products from these countries are just two ways to help. Social media is another way to, to bring attention to social issues around the world. Just one simple hashtag or a group of posts can raise awareness no matter where you are or how old you are. Closer to home in the U.S., contacting local Muslim-owned businesses and organizations would be the best way to go about this issue. Having Muslim-owned restaurants and stores sponsor local school events would help the children feel supported and normalized in their community. When more and more people start seeing Muslims as peaceful and active supporting members in the community, the way they perceive them may change. It is no new concept that Muslims are viewed as different and weird, but what is a new concept to some is if we just show them that we are loudly, proudly Muslim. And as we're all knowing, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah Rahman, verse 60, is there any reward for good other than good? Jazakumullah khairan. Takbir. 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 Uh, I'll make the announcement again for the clapping. Let's avoid that. I'll do it every single time, inshallah. I don't get bored tired of it. Um, next, we have Mariam Altaf. Mariam, come on over and make your way to the stage. Did you have a presentation? Um, do you know which one it is? No, it's an email. I just sent it. Oh, you just sent it? Okay. 
All right, just type in the email or a few words of it. So click enter. That's fine. That's fine. Just click enter. Uh, are you sure you sent it? No, I don't have it here. I see Hadis though. Oh, here? Oh, I'll make sure they uh, have it going. Okay, go for it. Is it working? Yeah, I just see. <coughs> Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. My name is Mari Maltoff, and today I'm going to be talking about the catastrophes of world hunger. The Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam said, "Whoever feeds someone who is hungry." his sins will be forgiven. So what does this mean? It means that we should care about those who don't have access to nutritious food. So what is the issue here? The issue here is world hunger. Let me get this definition straight. The definition, um, the definition of world hunger is when a po population of people is struggling with food insecurity um, for a period of time. World hunger is an important issue in this world today that we need to fix. Up to 811 million people um, about 13% of the world's population today um, regularly go to bed on a hung on, on a day, um, hungry on a daily basis. These hunger spots are Ethiopia, Nigeria, South Sudan, Yemen, um, and Somalia. These people are too poor to be able to find, uh, uh, find food. They lack resources to grow their own food, um, such as arable land and the means to harvest, process, and store food. But growing, but growing and buying food isn't the only thing. Some, um, they are, they're the only contributors of world hunger. Some countries cannot grow food of, because of env environmental climate issues. Some countries face natural disasters, such as uh, growing, buy growing and um, buying food are not nearly impossible. Another example of the environmental, um, another, in another example of the envir environment contributing to world hunger is climate change. Stanford University once said, crops that once thrived as a stable in one region may, long, may no longer be plentiful because um, enough to f face a community that formerly depended on it. These world issues build world hunger. Although world hunger is a serious issue, there are some solutions that can help. Number one, stop wasting food. Many people go to the grocery stores and they buy like a six pack of some, some groceries and they only they throw it away like a couple of days later because it expired or they can't eat it. And the, one, the, the solution to it is you can only buy the food that you need and that can save the money and you can like give the no donations to like another thing. Another one is food donations. You can, food, you can give uh, money and food to, like the, um, to any organizations that you know or a friend that you know that gives food or something like that to um, the food donations. The third one is urban farming. One fourth Auntie Nornish people live in urban areas. Um, this would allow people to gain control of their food source by growing it themselves. Another one is advertising on social media. Everyone is on social media every single day. They're always looking at their phone. They're they're on social media. So this is a great opportunity to do daily reminders or videos or something like that to let them know about the food donations and organizations and let them know to, to send some money or some kind of like that to the, uh, food, to the food donations. In conclusion, world hunger is a serious problem in the world. Because of world hunger, many people are suffering. However, world hunger can have many solutions to save those people. These solutions include um, these solutions can include food, food donations and like uh, wa stop wasting food and urban farming. Society can be saved if we implement these solutions. And after all, everyone wants a happy ending. Jazakallah khairan. Thank you. Uh, takbir. Takbir. Inshallah, um, Isha Salah is coming uh, soon, so we'll have at least one or two more students present, and then we'll have to take a break, and then we'll come back uh, after that, inshallah. With that, um, we have our next presenter, who will be uh, Hadi. 
I think I have your presentation here, alhamdulillah. So come on now forward. Hadi Sadiqi. What's up? I had it. Just click on slideshow from the beginning and get started. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa rakatu. Aroudu billahi min sallan rajim. Bismillahi rahman rahim. My name is Hayy Siddiqui, and today I want to talk to you about a major problem in today's world, education. Although many countries across the world have more access to education, the amount of kids who are learning meaningful content is dwindling. Many students that make it through high school still do not have the means to perform simple tasks such as paying bills or paying taxes. Some of you here today are kids who are currently in middle or high school. Think about what you're currently learning. Most of the curriculum that you're learning likely won't help you come 20 or 30 years later in your life. A survey by H&R Block surveyed 2,000 adults in America on the same exact issue. 84% of people in this survey said that over half the skills that they use in their current occupation were learned on the job itself and not in school. Another shocking statistic is that 54% of adults in America have a literacy rate below a sixth grade level. These facts just go to show how messed up the education system is in America. One quote that highlights this issue was stated by Albert Einstein. Education is what remains after one has forgotten everything he learned in school. So why did I even choose this issue? I am very passionate about this issue because I understand how important education is in this world. The need for smarter people is increasing as new innovations are being introduced. I believe that in order for the world to be a better place, education must be improved for the people of tomorrow to succeed. But why should you, the Muslim Ummah, care about education? Well, in Islam, education is incredibly important. The Quran and Prophet Muhammad وسلم, valued education greatly. The Prophet, peace be upon him, encouraged the seeking of knowledge and education as a religious duty for everyone, regardless of age, gender, or race. This is one ayat from the Quran that highlights the importance of education in Surah Majadila, verse 11. God will exalt those of you who believe and those who have knowledge to high degrees. Sayyid Muhammad Naqib al atas a very famous Muslim scholar, described the purpose of education as a balanced growth of the total personality. Now, you know why this is such a prevalent issue and why it is important. But now, what is the solution? The solution to, m to this problem is a website. Here is the website that I have created. Now, it is not functional. However, this is my vision and hopefully it is simple but will be very effective. So let's say our user here is named Bob. Bob is fresh out of high school and he is struggling. He does not know how to pay taxes. He does not know how to pay bills. And he is just struggling. He uh, is trying to live his life, but he can't without these necessary skills. So he searches up into my website, how to pay taxes. He sees this video by Ayan Muhammad on how to pay taxes, and it's a course. He sees his qualifications, and he realizes that this person is someone to be trusted and a very credible person, person from which he can learn from. Ayan says, hello, welcome to the paying taxes course. After Bob, uh, after Bob reads this and uh, watches this video by Ayan Muhammad, he has some questions and he understands some of it, but he still has some things that he does not understand. So he says, I have a question. Ayan says, yes, please ask, is there anything you don't understand? He's very welcoming and he, uh, he is very welcoming to Bob. Now Bob has a, some, a few options to do now. He can ask a question, he can quiz himself on the, on the same exact issue, and he can explore more courses on similar topics. Now, how is this website different from something like YouTube or Khan Academy? On a website such as YouTube, you cannot chat directly with the creator. Although you, you can chat uh, with the creator, it is a public link, it is a public chat. Anybody and everybody can see what you are talking to. This website, has a feature in which you can ask questions and chat directly with the creator completely privately so you know exactly uh, what you're saying and you know that it will not be shared with anybody else. What makes this different from something like Khan Academy though? Well, on Khan Academy, do you see any courses besides science or math that can teach you how to be, how, can, that can teach you skills in different occupations such as engineering, uh, being a surgeon, uh, being a policeman, these are some basic occupations with some very necessary skills, but you can't 
teach those skills on a website such as Khan Academy. You can't learn those skills on a website such as Khan Academy. On this website, you can. This makes it more unique and the better choice for education when you want to learn something for your occupation. Now I implore all of you to help the cause for education and create a better world for the people of tomorrow. Thank you and assalamu alaikum. Uh, takbir. Takbir. Inshallah, it's almost time for Isha. So, oh, you will de delay Isha 10 minutes? Oh, great. All right. So, okay, Inshallah, we'll delay Isha for 10 minutes and then we'll go from there. All right. So, we'll be able to actually wrap it up. We have three more presentations to go. Our next presenter is going to be Rabia Saeed. Rabia, come on forward. All right. Uh, just a reminder inside the masjid, let's not clap. It's not part of the etiquette of the mother to clap. And shall we can say takbir, and that'll be great. Mashallah, we'll make it happen. So Rabia, we'll open your presentation and take this. Okay. And you can start in just a second. Okay, just the arrow keys. To make arrow key to the right to make okay. it. Okay. Assalamu alaikum, everyone. My name is Rabia Saeed, and today I'll be talking about urban planning. So I want to ask you all to picture what you're going to see when you walk outside the masjid today. You're going to see the parking lot filled with cars, right? Well, imagine, instead of that, you could have a plaza with all your favorite restaurants, a swimming pool, a playground for kids, a garden, and even more. And you may ask me, well, how would we do that without acquiring more land around the masjid? And that's where urban planning comes in. Urban planning is the process in which we design, plan, and build the areas we work, live, and relax in. But in our country today, many cities face the problem of urban sprawl. Urban sprawl is a dependency and the spread of large suburban neighborhoods in cities that create a huge dependency on cars. This all started in the 1900s where there was an economic boom and many families had the new wealth to buy what was considered the American dream at the time. That was a two-story suburban house with a large white picket fence. And although that may have worked at the time, times have changed and many problems arise with this type of urban planning. One of the first problems is that it separates us from the places we need to be on a daily basis, such as the masjid, for example, or your workplace. Many people these days cannot easily walk to their favorite restaurant or their favorite store. It also creates a huge dependency on cars, which have many problems associated with them. First of all, cars are not accessible to everyone. Those who are elderly, too young, or maybe disabled cannot drive to places. They are also not affordable for everyone, since cars and even the gas prices these days are very expensive. Additionally, cars create pollution, traffic, and dangerous accidents. And lastly, urban sprawls help our create a lack of community. People these days don't know their neighbors and it makes sense why. Community can only be formed through strong social interaction outside, but how can that happen when neighborhood these days only comprise of houses and roads separated by yards? The lack of people outside also creates a safety issue because no one is outside to look out for one another. And you may ask me, well, what is the solution to all these problems I've listed? And the answer is walkable communities. These are cities in which the community scale is based on people, not cars. This means that all aspects of a community that people need are within a walkable distance and do not need a car to get there. So it, and in terms of places that may be too far to walk, such as some workplaces, walkable communities often will equip a form of public transportation, such as buses or trains, to help transport the community members in a more safe and environmentally friendly way than cars. And these communities also have many benefits. First of all, they create a more healthy society because people are forced to walk or bike to get to places. They are also more sustainable because they use public transportation instead of cars. They also minimize the amount of green space that is cleared out for construction. And lastly, they strengthen the harmony and bonds in a community because they create more opportunities for community members to spend time together. I also wanted to give some evidence for my point. 
The Institution for Transportation Development and Policy, or the ITDP, is a nonprofit organization based in New York City that promotes the usage of public transportation and walkable communities. They developed a report assessing the walkability of cities all over the globe. Some cities, like Hong Kong and China and Moscow and Russia, were rated some of the world's highest walkable cities. But many cities in America, such as Indianapolis, for example, were ranked some of the least in terms of walkability. And when you compare this to the 2009 Green Deck study, which is a study conducted by National Geographic, uh, National Geographic to assess how environmentally sustainable different countries are, you can see that countries with walkable communities such as China and Russia have a much larger percentage of their population that uses public transportation daily, while America lags behind at only 5% using their public transportation daily. This shows that when you compare these two studies, that countries with more walkable cities are more sustainable and environmentally friendly because they promote the use of public transportation instead of cars. And I wanted to illustrate my point with some pictures here. As you can see, the urban planning we have today creates communities with nothing but just roads and houses. It also creates very congested roads and highways because everyone needs to drive to get anywhere. And it also creates very polluted cities because we have to clump all the buildings together because our houses are so sprawled out. And I wanted to compare this with what a walkable community would look like. As you can see, the space is evenly uh, distributed with walkways for people to walk in, businesses that people need, homes for people to live in, public transportation, and green area for people to work out and play in. It, and to maximize the amount of space that's used, you can see that people build apartments or condos on top of businesses. And then lastly, I want to bring the solution home. You may ask how we can implement this in our community, since many of us already have established homes and communities. And a great way to do this is through masjid neighborhoods. We already have a great neighborhood outside our own epic masjid, Medina Villas. But the problem with this neighborhood is that the plots of land have already sold out, they're very expensive, and they're limited. So not everyone can live there and easily walk to the masjid. Even the apartments across the street, the Los Rios apartments, are not accessible. Because I used to live there, and it's not safe to cross the road, because there isn't even a crosswalk to the masjid. So in the future, inshallah, our masjid can build communities around them with the masjid at the center. We can create Muslim communities with businesses, libraries, schools, and restaurants for people to live in with apartments or condos built on top of them so that we can create a great Muslim community, inshallah. Because after all, who wouldn't like to hear the local than from their masjid, just like in Medina with the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and Bilal Radiallahu Anhu, and be able to walk to their five daily salat. Thank you so much for your time. Jazakallah khair takbir. Alhamdulillah, we have a lot of people that are coming in. Inshallah, we're just finishing up our leadership program uh, capstone presentations. We're going to begin Isha Slaya at 10:10. Uh, 10, 10, inshallah, so just give us a few more minutes. Our next speaker is going to be Safa Ali. Safa, come on over, make your way up. Takbir. Remember what you said about clapping? There we go. Who did, who clapped? Mashallah. All right, Safa, did you send a presentation? Do you remember what email you sent it to? Um, what is it? One, uh, yeah, that one. This one? Like if you click it, it's right there. So far, Ali. Oh no. Oh, okay. Um, it's not giving me access to it. You need access. Yeah. Why don't you go work on that? And let me get the next speaker to come. Um, we're having issue with that presentation. In the meantime, let's have Wakar Badar come on to the stage, and you'll have will present for now. All right, Takbir. All right, my students, next one to clap. You're gonna be in big trouble. I'm watching you. Wakar, go for it. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. My name is Waqar. I am in sixth grade and I was in public school. I chose this topic because at this point I'm hearing and watching 
this problem grow very, very aggressively, and many individuals, communities, and society is suffering. Drug addiction is in which the person's brain and behavior is affected. It leads to inability to control the person's the use of the drug, meaning this person has no control over his brain or body. As of 2020, among Americans aged 12 years and older, 37.309 million were current illegal drug users. You can search the stats for most commonly abused drugs and they are marijuana, cocaine, and fentanyl. The, the problem is drug use is responsible for 11.8 million deaths each year and over 350 die from overdose. And we men are already a poor species but according to stats, drug addiction is more common in men. More than half of those who die are younger than 50, and we are already facing global diseases, and drugs are increasing it by 1.5%. But if you live in poor countries, they are increasing by 5%. Drug addiction inflicts immeasurable harm on public health and safety around the world each year. These are the numbers of problems which have become more difficult to manage day by day. Number one, impact on health. The global cost is 35 billion annually, and this cost is growing every second. In some countries, one out of 10 patients are lucky enough to get the treatment that they really need. Number two, impact on public safety. Uh, the, an example is drug-affected car accidents. Number three, relationship with crime. If you're a drug addict and you're doing a crime, your brain is in space and your body does not know what it's doing because when you take drugs, you really don't know what's happening. Number four, impact on productivity. Let's say you're a drug addict and you go to work and every five seconds you keep on thinking that I just want another taste and another taste until you just stop thinking about work and you keep on thinking about drugs and eventually you will get fired. Number five, impact on government. Uh, the, if one person takes drugs, he tells his friend to take drugs with him. That number will keep multiplying until it's into the millions and then the government does get involved. The good news is there are several options available for you even if they are severe. Or sometimes you can use a combination of therapies. Number one, detoxification. You could stop taking the drugs and let the drug leave the body. Number two, behavioral therapies. Cognitive and psychotherapy can help with the addictions. Number three, Last, we can combine medic medication-assisted therapies. In this option, we use medicine to control cravings, and it also helps us to withdrawal symptoms, with withdrawal symptoms. At the end, I just want to warn everyone with these points to remember, and they are, don't even try illegal drugs, not even once. It's not a good idea. Number two, strictly follow the instructions for prescribed medicines. Number three, dispose of any unused prescription medicines. Number four, the most important out of this whole speech, that is choose your friends wisely. Whatever your friends are, that's what you are. And for this uh, pre project only, I met an affected family, and it wasn't their family, but it was their daughter, and she was a state champion they were my neighbors. The father's name was Mr. Robert, and they, yeah, they, it, she was a state champion in karate, but then because of her friends, she got dragged into a deep, dark pit, and she started taking drugs, and eventually she did get kicked out of the house. Assalamu alaikum.
Takbir. Takbir. Inshallah, it's going to be time for Isha. Let's move this table forward and then we can have somebody give the adhan. So let's take a break for Isha Salah. Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, Ashhadu an la ilaha illa أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله أشهد أن محمد رسول أشهد أن محمد رسول الله حي على الصلاة حي على الصلاة Straighten the lines, fill in the gaps, inshallah, pray as though this is your last prayer. Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, Ashhadu an la ilaha illa Allah, Ashhadu anna Muhammad al-Rasulullah, Hayya ala al-Salah, Hayya ala al-Falah, قد قامت الصلاة قد قامت الصلاة الله أكبر الله أكبر لا إله إلا الله لا إله إلا الله محمد رسول الله صلى الله الله أكبر الحمد لله رب العالمين الرحمن الرحيم مالك يوم الدين إياك نعبد وإياك نستعين اهدنا الصراط المستقيم 
صراط الذين انعمت عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين امين وسيق الذين كفروا إلى جهنم زمرا حتى إذا جاءوها فتحت أبوابها وقال لهم وقال لهم خزنتها ألم يأتكم رسل منكم ألم يأتكم رسل منكم يتلون عليكم آيات ربكم يتلون عليكم آيات ربكم وينذرونكم لقاء يومكم هذا قالوا بلى قالوا بلى ولكن حق قد كلمة العذاب على الكافرين قيل ادخلوا أبواب جهنم خالدين فيها فبئس مثوى المتكبرين وسيق الذين اتقوا ربهم إلى الجنة زمرا حتى إذا جاءوها وفتحت أبوابها وقال لهم وقال لهم خزنتها سلام عليكم وقال لهم خزنتها سلام عليكم طبتم فادخلوها خالدين وقالوا الحمد لله وقالوا الحمد لله الذي صدقنا وعده وأورثنا الأرض وأورثنا الأرض نتبوأ من الجنة حيث نشاء فنعم أجر العاملين وترى الملائكة حافين من حول العرش من حول العرش يسبحون بحمد ربهم وقضي بينهم وقضي بينهم بالحق وقيل الحمد لله وقيل الحمد لله رب العالمين الله أكبر بسم الله لمن حمده الحمد حمدا كثيرا طيبا الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر الحمد لله رب العالمين الرحمن الرحيم مالك يوم الدين إياك نعبد وإياك نستعين اهدنا الصراط المستقيم صراط الذين أنعمت عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين آمين 
إذا زلزلت الأرض زلزالها وأخرجت الأرض أثقالها وقال الإنسان ما لها يومئذ تحدث أخبارها بأن ربك أوحى لها يومئذ يصدر الناس أشتاة ليروا أعمالهم فمن يعمل مثقال ذرة خيرا يره ومن يعمل مثقال ذرة شرا يره الله أكبر سمي الله لمن حمده الحمد الحمد الكثير طيب الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر سمي الله لمن حمده الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر سمي الله لمن حمده الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر
السلام عليكم ورحمة الله السلام عليكم ورحمة الله استغفر الله استغفر الله استغفر الله الله من السلام والسلام ربنا تحلي دي هذا الجلال Assalamu alaikum, uh, dear brothers and sisters. Uh, Alhamdulillah, we had a very amazing program just right uh, before Isha from Maghrib. Uh, we were doing the presentation for the leadership camp, the capstone pro project. So Alhamdulillah, this is you know our vision from our board that we want to empower our youth. We want to make them the leaders and the change makers for tomorrow so that you know to, when we are not here, they will be our uh, representatives, they will be the leaders in this masjid, in the community, and inshallah in the whole world. So regarding this, we had this program this whole summer from July we had. So today is the final day and uh, Alhamdulillah, I'll just uh, ask, uh, it was done in the with the collaboration with the CARE Texas with uh, Brother Fezan Sayed. Uh, Brother Fezan, can you please come here? Uh, he's, uh, mashallah, he did a very amazing job, you know, working with almost 60, 70 youth, boys and girls, and trying to encourage them to learn the public speaking, debating, and, and different topics about Islamic history and uh, learning from them. So, Jazakallah uh, Khair. Thank you so much, Brother Fezan. Uh, Brother Imran, are you here? Yeah, please. Uh, maybe Brother Imran can also say a few words. Jazakallah Khair. Assalamu alaikum warahmatullah. So, inshallah, I'm going to keep it uh, very, very brief. Uh, uh, Brother Fazal already covered uh, this program. So, as you may not know, for the past four weeks, we've been running this amazing program, this leadership program for our teenagers. In this program, they learn the, how to debate, public speaking, uh, uh, you having the team activities and the team, exercise, uh, team building exercises, uh, civic engagement, Islamic history. So there was so much to learn in the past four weeks and what a job, a very amazing job done by the team. So here, I just want to thank you people. First, I want to thank the CARE DFW. Thank you for your partnership. I want to thank our facilities team. I want to thank Brother Basir Sayed, Brother Bukhari, Brother Yaya Sheikh, all of these brothers who've been working behind the scene, setting up the chairs and many other things, social media, all of that stuff. So I want to thank them. And like I said, I want to thank two special people. First, I want to thank Brother Fazal Sayed. Uh, if you don't know, he's our youth liaison. So all of these youth activities are coming from his side, from his committee, and Brother Fezan Sayed. Well, Fezan, you have done an amazing job. What an execution and planning. So thank you so much for your partnership. Uh, we, we, are, we are really grateful. Thank you so much. Uh, lastly, I want to thank and really congratulate all of our students. Look, whether you did the presentation today or not, whether you won or not, you're all winners at the end of the day. Just by completing this course, you've been there for four weeks learning. And just my one advice for all of the students is one of the key principles of leadership is humility. That's one of the key. Within humility, you can cover all the pieces, inshallah. So being humble means being thankful. So be thankful to your teacher for doing an amazing job. And inshallah, be thankful to your parents who enrolled you and paid $75. <laughs> so anyway, Jazakallah here, everybody. And with that, uh, Fazal Bhai, I'm going to pass it on to you uh, for the next. Uh, yeah, inshallah, you're the MC, right? <laughs> um, we didn't have a uh, winner yet because we are working on it. Oh, we, we don't have a winner yet. Yeah, okay. we can take Yasser for the announcement. So uh, I'll just uh, ask uh, uh, Sheikh Yasser uh, if he's here. Uh, we, uh, he'll give a short uh, reminder for us. Uh, Bismillah, alhamdulillah, wa salatu wa salamu ala rasulillah wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa nwala hama ba'd. Alhamdulillah, I had the uh, pleasure to uh, address the youth camp uh, for one of the sessions. Mashallah, it was very, very impressive uh, to see, mashallah, for one month we are taking the next generation, teaching them life skills, teaching them management skills, leadership skills. And in fact, the Quran itself tells us 
to test children with responsibility. Allah says in the Quran, وَبَتَلُوا الْيَتَامَ حَتَّى إِذَا بَلَغُوا النِّكَاحِ فَإِنْ آنَسْتُ مِنْهُمْ رُجْدًا فَادْفَعُوا إِلَيْهَا أَمْوَالَهُمْ Keep on testing the yatim until you sense from them maturity. When you sense maturity, then hand over the amana, meaning the inheritance that they, uh, that Allah Azza wa Jal has left for them. So this verse tells us that it is our job to make sure the next generation can carry the baton. The next generation able, is able to carry the torch onwards. And alhamdulillah, Alhamdulillah, it's so happy to see that uh, Epic along with Care is taking charge of this. And I've been hearing, I walked in and two or three of their pres presentations were going on. And subhanAllah, the confidence of, you know, these 12, 13, 14 years, mashaAllah, the way that they're expressing these facts, they're standing in front of 500 people and they didn't wince, they didn't stutter, they didn't stammer. They're, they're saying the facts and they're mashaAllah laying out their case. It made my heart so happy. If they can do this at 15, what's going to happen inshallah when they're 25, 35, 45. So we're laying the foundation for them. And for those of you who weren't able to participate, what you send your children or if they were too young, inshallah next year, the year after inshallah, we have a commitment. Inshallah, we have a commitment. I'm making it public now. Everybody knows inshallah. We'll have an annual program inshallah ta'ala to make sure that we can train our youth to take over the leadership. And again, brothers and sisters, this has been my vision, the vision of Epic, all of the board of Epic. Our priority is the next generation. We have, alhamdulillah, guaranteed the elders. Look around you. MashaAllah, they're already here. They're already here. Even if they don't like something I say, we say, they're still gonna come. But the youth, we need to make sure they come. The youth, we need to empower them. And this is how we're doing this, by teaching them, by making them feel special, by giving them the skills that is essential, and by alhamdulillah, prioritizing them over others. So I hope inshallah, we continue to raise the bar, support all the efforts that we do, and most importantly, the love, the dua, the compassion at home and in the masjid for the next generation. We have to make sure they understand this religion is not just about rituals, it's not just about a list of do's and don'ts, it's also a philosophy of living, it's a way of life, it teaches us akhlaq and manners, it empowers them, it makes them feel a part of a greater ummah, and that's what inshallah we're doing with these programs. So jazakumullah khair for all that have participated, and inshallah next year as well, I hope to participate in my own way as well. Jazakumullah khair, salam alaikum wa'alaikum Jazakallah Shaykh Yasser, thank you so much for uh, giving us this uh, reminder. Uh, so as uh, you know, we had some technical difficulties, uh, brothers and sisters, so we could not complete the, the competition. So we'll continue now. Uh, so we'll, we'll have a couple of more presentations and uh, if you have, uh, you know, if you have been here for Maghrib and you know, if you have to leave then that's fine. But we'll just continue and we'll have the, the winners announced after that. And also we have some refreshments back in the multipurpose hall, some tea and other refreshments. So please feel free while you're leaving, you can, you can have that. Thank you so much. Jazakallah khair. I'm just gonna tell people. So inshallah students, let's come back up front. Let's put our table back here. And let's get the chairs on the side. We have two more presentations before we conclude. Uh, Assalamu alaikum everybody. Let's let everybody pray sunnah and then we'll begin. So we'll just wait a few minutes.
And mashallah, last but not least, we'll have our sister Safa come up and then give the last presentation of the night. Safa, come on over. Takbir, Allah Akbar. Mashallah, before anybody starts clapping. Hi, Bam, this is you, right? Oh, that's fine. We'll go, we can go back with one. Give it a second. Let's just make sure it's projecting, and then you can get started. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. My name is Safa Ali, and today I'll be talking about climate change and what we as a community can do about it. So first of all, what is climate change? Many of you have heard the term before, but may not know exactly what it is. Well, climate change is long-term temperature and weather changes that can be caused naturally, but because of human activities like, um, like burning fossil fuels, it is now mainly because of us. The main causes for climate change include deforestation, the burning of fossil fuels, and greenhouse gases. Greenhouse gases are gases emitted by burning fossil fuels that trap heat in our atmosphere. Because of this, we have had global warming and increasing temperatures as years go by. What are the effects of climate change? Well, climate change has many negative effects on not only us as individuals, but also on the environment around us. Some of these effects include the loss of animal species, melting glaciers, severe storms, and droughts. Sea levels are rising, and there's also a shortage of food because of, these, um, unpredictable, uh, because of unpredictable weather. The Prophet, peace be upon him, said, The world is sweet and green, and verily Allah is going to install you as vicegerents in it in order to see how you act. It is our responsibility to care for our environment. As a community, it is our responsibility to come together to find solutions for climate change. Well, solar panels are machines used to transform light and energy from the sun into usable electricity. I believe that the Epic community could use solar panels to power its masjid. Being such a large mosque, Epic uses a, lo a lot of electricity all day to power its fans, AC, and lighting. Why solar panels? Well, solar panels are pollution-free, it's a renewable energy source, and it reduces our carbon footprint. This means less greenhouse gases. We also save money on our electric bill. What this means is, although solar panels are very expensive to install at first, with the cut down on our electricity bill as months go by, we eventually get paid back. Here's a chart of the, here's a very hypothetical and approximate chart of how much money Epic spends on their electricity bill annually. Right now, um, Epic pays annually at least around $36,000 just on their electricity bill. But because of inflation and increasing prices, these, by the end of 2031, Epic could be paying $185,000 just on their electricity. Unless we change to solar panels. But how can we do this? First of all, we need to raise awareness. People need to know what's going on and how it affects them and their environment. Then we need to raise money. We need to start an Epic Go Green Fund where all money going to this fund helps, and helps us install our solar panels. Then we need to get permits, get our equipment, and get our solar panels. As you can see on these pictures of Epic's rooftop, there's a lot of unused real estate all over its roof. Um, and inshallah, if this happens, uh, if, we, if Epic can, as a community can come together and make solar panels happen, it'll lead to other masajid in Texas to do the same, and inshallah we'll have more green masjids. Um, Jazakallah khair for listening. Assalamu alaikum. Right, mashallah, mashallah, mashallah. Very well done. Takbir. All right, we have one last minute presentation that we'll have uh, do it as well. Um, just come on forward, give it, and then we'll announce the winners at, right after that's over. Come on forward. Do you have a presentation, a PowerPoint? Oh, 
Yeah, you get ready and I'll get. Assalamu alaikum. My name is Ansha Samara, and today I'm going to be talking to you about social media addiction. Social media addiction is a very dangerous thing, and you can lose a lot of things, like family, friends, and respect. So first, I'm going to talk about the main problem. Next, I'll fill you on the, on the symptoms, and then I'll say the solution. So this is a story about how social, impact, social media can impact you and others. So when I was younger, I had this friend named Bingo. Bingo was my best friend, and we used to do everything together. But as we got older, we drifted apart. She installed TikTok, Instagram, Snapchat, and all the social media apps. When I went to her house, she was usually on her phone. She was on her phone 24-7. Just like that, Bingo had gotten social media addiction. So you may ask, how is social media addiction like other addictions, and how is it unique? Well, social media addiction would fall under the category of a behavioral addiction. Other behavioral addictions like the internet, shopping, video games, plastic surgery, and, th and even gambling. Now I'll fill you in on the problem. Well, studies have shown that an average teenager spends about 3,285 hours a year on social media. Social media is addicting and can cause depression, anxiety, FOMO, and even drug and alcohol temptations. Social media also portrays a false sense of reality on its, that damages the mental health on its heavy users. So if you have social media addiction, you're probably spending too much time on your phone than your other regular activities and hobbies. You're probably also using social media to cope with your negative emotions. Social media can also affect things in a bad way, and it can, and it can uh, negatively affect your health, school, family, and relationships. The solution would be to reflect and think on your and you should disconnect yourself from the digital world gradually and give yourself some time to reflect. You can also arrange a get together with friends and family and have a no cell phone policy. You should also try to do something productive like going, doing some volunteer work and having a time limit on your phone. Thank you. Also, if you need, you should also see if you are actually addicted to social media. So, I have this test that you can take in seconds, and you can have the results that are also on the back of the page. Thank you. Takbir. Takbir. MashaAllah, the students, all of you did an excellent job at your presentation as well. Right now, our, st our student um, teaching assistants are going to be averaging the scores, and they'll come up to me with the final numbers in just a second. As they're doing that, I'll just share a few words. First and foremost, and Nasser, come here. You can also share a few words as well. First and foremost, all of you, all of you who present today did an amazing job. Being able to stand in front of a large crowd of people, in front of your parents and siblings, and give a presentation is something that's always very challenging. One of the reasons that we did this program specifically is to put young people in these difficult situations and as Muslims have them think about the world's problems as being our problem and our community's problems as well. And each of and every one of you did a fantastic job. At this time, I want Nasser to share with you a few words and then I'll conclude. Assalamu alaikum. Uh, I'm just blown away by the quality of the presentations from our young leaders, just echoing the introduction. It absolutely exceeded any expectation. Uh, and there's so much positive feedback. I try to write as many notes uh, as possible as I could. I, I, I want to echo just, just two other points. Uh, first is, you know, in terms of um, what Brother Faisan said about your, your reach and your touch, and, and combining that with Asha's presentation just now about phone addiction. So I have my phone set on emergency contacts only. And my phone goes off in the middle of the presentation. I thought, OK, this might, this might be a problem. So I look at it, and it's actually a text message from my wife. 
and she says, she's watching it live streaming at home from Epic, because she, or cause she, the Epic live stream, because she couldn't be here tonight. And she said, that girl's presentation, hi Jar, she didn't catch your name, I'm crying in tears right now. SubhanAllah, that's, that's, so carry your voice, champion your voice, use your voice as a springboard here forward. And I just wanted just three other students who I think had incredibly difficult circumstances that just really are worth a, a special compliment. Uh, first is Isa for kicking us off. Anytime you go first, oh, I'm, I can't imagine to go first with the stress and the anxiety that that causes. MashaAllah, amazing job to do that. And then I think in some ways the most difficult presentations uh, actually came during uh, Sister Rabia. It began with Sister Rabia's presentation and ended in Brother Waqar's presentation when the masses started to come in. True story, I have been in the room as attorneys are practicing the week before they are to meet oral arguments at the Supreme Court of the United States. And they're arguing in front of nine people, attorneys who are practicing, we call this moot court, because there's nine justices. And a door will open, and they'll become completely flustered. It'll throw off their entire argument. They'll turn, they'll look, and subhanAllah, Rabia and, and Waqar stood here, and I was watching their eyes as five, six, seven hundred people trickled in, and they didn't blink. They kept going. SubhanAllah, and Waqar, 11 years old, mashaAllah. Great job to you both. Takbir. Allahu Akbar. That's it? Oh, mashaAllah. Uh, our judges are telling up our scores, inshallah. So I'll just end with these few words, then we'll have Sheikh Yashar Qadi come forward, and we'll give out the prizes to everybody as well. At this leadership course, we ask a simple question. How do we change the world? How do we change the world? The people who are living around the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam were just average people living in the corner in the middle of nowhere. Yet, within 23 years, something happened to them that transformed themselves, their lives, and then they went out and transformed the world around them. Each and every one of us are Muslims today because of the efforts of these people. We believe that this young generation living in America, growing up here in the United States, have the greatest potential to make changes, not only in America, but all around the world as well. Today we see violence and poverty and all these challenges happening, and I firmly believe that these young people are gonna make that transformation happen. We hope that this leadership program is a way in that direction. Any of you who are interested in having your high school students join a leadership program, our next leadership program starts in the fall. We'll be teaching public speaking, it's a six week course, and then we do debating in the spring, and then we go to Washington DC in the summer. We encourage all of you, if you have high school students, to please encourage them to be a part of that as well, inshallah. With that, I'll conclude. Uh, Sheikh Yasser, in a few, uh, come on forward, and then I think they're finalizing it right now, and then we can make our decisions. What? Oh, yeah, yeah, no. So you have to So in a little bit, we'll go ahead and announce the speakers. Today we're gonna be giving out the 12 speakers that we had, we'll be giving the top five uh, cash prizes, Jazakallah Khair from Epic. So we'll announce the fifth place winner first and then we'll move our way up to the first place winner. And the first place winner will inshallah be announced at the very end. Let me uh, check over here, are you gals ready? Two more minutes, all right, <laughs> let's take a little break and then we'll uh, come in when they're ready inshallah.
50 first? All right, so the first two, yeah. That's it. So in fifth place, alhamdulillah, we, we had Yusuf Idris. Yusuf, mashallah, ahl al come on forward. Congratulations. Go, go, take a seat. All right, we'll stay here, actually. Okay. In fourth place, alhamdulillah, we had Il Ilsha Sahar. Did I say that right? Alisha, Alisha Sahar. <laughs> Sorry about totally messing up your. In third place, we have our sister Rabia Saeed. Mabruk, Mabruk. Congratulations. Great, Zafar, thank you. In second place, mashallah, Giles. In second place, we have Ashraf Kuzbari, who's not here, unfortunately, so he's the one that made the video. I can take it or what? Yeah, mashallah, mashallah. Oh, uh, we'll, we'll put it on the table, and I'll give it on the table later. Yeah, yeah. No, no, no. And in first place, who did uh, amazing one out of 75 students who did these presentations, we have Aya Idris. <laughs> Mashallah, Ahla Aya, can you take your mask off for the photo? Jasama Bruj, congratulations, thank you so much. Hi, focus here. All right. Well, uh, and last but not least, we'll give this uh, individual, a special prize as well. She was just 0.5 points away from making the top five. And that is, of course, Hajar. And I'm not going to say your last name. Hajar, mashallah, congratulations. Come on forward, but come on up. I'll give you a prize next time I see you. Jazakallah khair, everybody. Students, as you're leaving, you'll see your uh, certificates. If I can get all of our students to come to the front, we'll take a group photo before you guys leave. So all the students that were in the course, come to the front. Let's take a group photo before we go. Inshallah, let's move here. Please, inshallah, we'll have a quick uh, group photo for everybody. All the, all the students, please come here. Girls will be here. 